So my name is Gabriel, from, I'm 30 years old and I'm, I was born and raised in East Los Angeles. Wow. That's crazy, man. That's crazy, man. Wow. That's crazy, man. That's amazing, man. That's, that's amazing, man. Do you remember when you had your first tattoo? Yeah. I was probably like, um, I was like 14 or 15. And um, I got on my stomach. I got my neighborhood in my stomach. And also when I was like 15, I got, um, I can't really see it no more, but it's right here, it was a cover-up. And when I got those, you know, I got my neighborhood and um, I was like in 10th grade, I think. And I was, you know, back then, hardly no one had tattoos, so I thought it was all bad. So I was walking around like that, trying to show them off and stuff. But throughout the years, you know, I just started getting more and more. You know, I got my gang written all over my face because I really got into the, my gang banging and I wanted everyone to know that. And they want to talk to me to know what gang I'm from. So I don't care who it was. I wanted everyone in the world to talk to me to know what gang I'm from. So, yeah, but I, I'm getting tattoo removal also from homeboys. Yeah, it's, I did like six sessions already. Yeah. So, that's crazy. I'm tripping out on this. How was it? What was it like growing up? In your well, it was just like, um, Constantly, I've been shot five times already, so it was constantly like a lot of gang in East LA. Like it's a gang of like um, gang warfare, fighting over territory and fighting over pride and false pride, and just um, even amongst each other, like like our own gang fighting each other for for dope houses or for girls or whatnot, and um, yeah, so just like um, you know, everyone I grew up with. Probably that's around still, probably like five of us out of like over a, probably about 60, 70 of us. There's five that are, that, are not, that are not in prison right now and that are out in the streets right there. Probably like five of, us, five of them left. Yeah, so. I'll start. Yeah, like, like for me, like I was family orientated. Like um, my grandpa's house was a hangout spot for my gang. So it was like my uncles were from the gang. So it was me, my brother, and my cousins were not allowed to play in the front yard because they'd have all the, the homeboys over. The, they'd have the homeboys over every day in the front party and stuff. So we couldn't, we were not allowed in the front yard. But me and my brother and my cousins, we were like intrigued and we thought it was cool. So we tried to get noticed by them, tried to get acknowledged. They'd always give us money and they'd, um, we see the girls and we thought it was cool. So we grew up knowing that we wanted to be a part of this. We knew that it was going to be our life, you know? And uh, so I got in when I was like 14. And um, I just went full force. And your dad, he was happy to bring you into the gangs? Oh, my dad? Or your family? No, no, my, my uncles. Yeah, my uncles, yeah. Um, they kind of, um, they, it was just how it was. Like, they weren't proud of it. They weren't, they didn't try to keep us away. That's just how it was. Like, once we got older, like, um, not older, but once we became teenagers, we knew that that was going to be us too, and no, no one was going to stop us. I mean, like, we, you know, like that's what um, they showed us. So that's naturally we followed, followed the lead. But then I started a couple of cousins. My cousins died, and my other cousin got left crippled and stuff. And so me, I felt obligated that I have to participate now because you know my cousins were get dying and stuff like that. So I felt like I have to, um, I have to get retaliation and have to, um, I felt obligated to my family. And to myself, you know, as uh, not a man, because I wasn't a man, I was a kid, but I mean, but as a man, I had, felt I had to, I had to be a part of it too. Like some real gang warfare going on. I mean, talking about some real, like, people dying, like, all the time, like, going back and forth, back and forth, literally across the train tracks. Literally, you know, there's a figure of speech across the tracks, but literally, the other gang, and like, so we, like, in, like, one day, like, 
we go back, we kill one of them, they come kill one of us, we go back, just back and forth, just nonstop, just killing each other, shooting each other. And it was like, you know, those times, like, I've been shot, like I said, I've been shot five times. And those times were like, you know, where I was in the car and um, I can't remember a lot of times, you know, where one of my homies got killed right in front of me and I, was, I didn't get hit, but he got hit like three times. Um, I've been, you know, in a car where like, um, well, they just light up the whole car with an AK-47 and I'm just laying on the floor and I didn't get hit. And just, there was a lot of times, you know, it was real, but back then it was like, um, and I look back and like, and I look back, I'm scared for that kid that didn't know what, what he was doing. But at the time, like I was all like all for it, and I, I, you know, I was down, and I was, I thought everything was cool, and I, that was just part of life. But now, like I don't know how I, I, if I could go through that, I would never do it again, because I don't know how I survived it. And like I'm scared for that kid back then, but you know, that kid, be, that kid became a man, and um, you know, 18 months ago, I decided to change my life, and um. And the hardest thing was coming to terms with the person that I was, the, you know, I was a monster. And um, being comfortable in my own skin to talk about it and talk about my life story um, as to the person, person I used to be. And the reason why I do it, I try to paint that picture. You know, I don't, I don't ever glorify, glorify anything I did as a gang member. I don't glorify the reasons of why I went to prison. Um, all I do is glorify that, you know, that I chose my gang and the street life over my kids. You know, I chose that over my kids, and um, and um, that's the person I used to be. But now that I've changed my life, I have my kids in my life, and um, I, I, I just talk about the person I used to be so that people can see that if I could change, that anyone could change. You know what I mean? What, what moment was it that you decided to change? Um, when I had my, um, so I have a 21-year-old and a 19-year-old, and like I said, I didn't raise them. I was hardly ever there for them in their life. But um, you know, 18 months ago, yeah, about 17 and a half months ago, I had another son, um, and you know, when I seen him born, and I cut into the back cord, and I was looking at him, I was thinking like, you know, he's, he, unlike my other kids that grew up somewhere else, he's gonna grow up in my neighborhood, he's gonna grow up right there, and you know, and he's gonna um, make this, he's probably gonna end up joining the same gang too, because in my neighborhood there's only one gang, and it's all, families like everyone in the whole city knows that's only my gang and you know and um he's probably gonna make the same decision and i was looking at him and i was thinking like where did i go wrong in my life that um that i chose like my gang over my kids you know so that's when i decided i had to make a change in my life um well first thing i did was you know, i was arrested a week later because um, I had, a, I had a, a power warrant, which means a parolee at large, because I'm what they call a, a habitual absconder, meaning that every time I'm, re I'm, on, I'm on high control parole, and every time I'm, re I'm released, I have 24 hours to report to my parole officer, but I never, ever did. So, um, so I always had a warrant, no matter what. And so every time the cops see me, they knew I had a warrant. So every time they see me, I'll go to jail. So I got 20 parole violations and three prison terms. And so, and I was arrested a week after my son was born, I was arrested and I knew I wanted to change my life, but I didn't know, they didn't know how to, how to go about doing it because um, my whole circle was nothing but gang members, and drug addicts and drug drug dealers. And um, that's the only people I knew my whole life that I associated with. So I didn't know how to change my life, you know? And um, so my parole officer had a big part of it. You know, he, I called him from my jail cell and I told him I wanted to change my life and I didn't know how to do it. So he he gave me a release pass out of jail. He, he, I didn't have to do a parole violation. He picked me up, let me out, and he took me to a program and that's when I started to make my change. And then, um, um, you know, so I was in that program making my change. I was in college. I got a hold of my kids. I started being part of their lives. And, um, you know, it's funny how God works because, um, you know, my earliest, my earliest memories of my life was, you know, my dad beating my mom. My dad was a heroin addict, and my dad used to take us to stores and have us steal for him. And then he used to um, throw us in windows, house windows, so we could open the doors for him, so he could rob houses and stuff. As a teenager, I see my dad a couple of times, 
I, when I became an adult in my 20s, my dad would come around. He was still a heroin addict still. And when he would hit rock bottom, he'd come looking for me so that he could, um, I'd give him money, you know, because I, I didn't like him, but he was still my dad. I gave him money and stuff. But after my mom died, I hated my dad. I didn't want everyone to see him because because all I could think about was how, how I used to be my mom. So um, it's funny how God works, like I said, because um, my dad went to go visit me in that program one day and um, and um, he asked me if I could be a part of his life. Just same thing I told my kids, he was just standing telling me. And he told me that he was clean for seven years and that, you know, that if, um, that I just, he just wanted me to be a part of his life. And uh, so we started talking and my dad grew up a block away from Homeboy Industry, I mean, from um, the Lord's Mission Church. So my dad knew Father G when Father G first came. So um, <clears throat> so my dad um, dragged me to Homeboys and um, he said I, he said I'd be a poster child for Homeboy Industries. Cause I told him, you know, I, I, I was I was getting discouraged because I was looking for a job everywhere and I couldn't find a job. So he told me to go to Homeboy Industries. Up until that point, I didn't really know too much about Homeboys, just that it was a place you get a job. And that's all I thought it was. So he told me to go down there. He goes, man, Gabriel, you, you'd be a poster child for Homeboy Industries. So pretty much that's what I am now. <laughs> well, Gabriel, he, he's he's the messenger for God. He's he's the one that um, every when God wants when God um wanted a message sent, he, uh, something very urgent. He was sent Gabriel to, to send the message. So um, I'm trying to I'm trying to compare myself to to the, an angel, but you know I believe I I send a message that save that could save a lot of people's lives. And it's very important, if, you know, a lot of people like that are going through trials and tribulations. And when, when they hear me talk, I could talk to them, I could really make them think over their whole lives. And when they hear my life story and stuff. What's, what's most important to you? My, um, first, first and foremost, like my children and um, my recovery. My recovery um, as, a, as a drug addict. And it was real hard for me to come to terms that I was a drug addict because I never stood out of, of um, prison more than two months ever. So I, I really never thought I was a drug addict, but um, you know, and I've been out for 18 months this time. It's the longest I've been out of my life. And um, you know, so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm really uh, a part of the NA program. And um, so that's a real big part of my life also, because not, not just as, not just like my, my drug use, my drug addiction, but it helps me um, come to terms with the person that I was, you know, all, all my all my character defaults. Like, um, like my drug addiction was just one of my character defaults, but the biggest problem I ever had was myself. And um, wherever I go, I'm gonna take my problem with me. Cause I'm gonna go wherever I go. So if I could make myself pure, if I could make myself clean, if I could come to terms, if I could accept the person I used to be, and if I could learn to love myself, then um, I could um, pretty much be happy. And I could like I said, be a good example for my children. The um, Combo Industries is an 18-month program, and it's not a job. So um, some people, they, they do keep around for a lot longer than 18 months. And um, I'm pretty positive I'm probably going to be one of those people. Right now I'm debating whether, what I should do in my career, but I'm, I'm really have to look into that, but I must. I, I know I don't want to work in a warehouse. Not that I'll be ungrateful to, but I, I, I just love helping helping people. I love um, I love um sharing my story with people, and I love um. Helping people, I love helping especially kids. So you know what um, I used to, I, I used to love it. That was the attention that my tattoos brought me. I used to love the fact that um. It would scare people away from me. I used to love the fact that people were um, would judge me. I still, I um, but now that you know that I have feelings today, and um, and um, I'm a father, and I'm really trying to change my life. Now it bothers me a lot, like when people are scared of me, and it bothers me a lot where when people like um, judge me, and um, now it bothers me a lot because um, it kind of hurts my feelings because um, cause I'm a good person, man. And, um, and I'm really learning that about my, I'm learning to love myself today. And um, yeah, so that, that, that bothers me.
a lot. It's pretty amazing, man. I mean, like I could, I look like I could have been anything in life, you know. Like I could have, like it just like hurts me, man, a lot because um, like. Like, I don't look like a gang member or nothing, man. You know, I have a son that's 21 right now, and he's out there using, and he got arrested a couple of times in the last year with the gun. And, um, you know, he's not a gang member, but, you know, all I could do is, um, you know, lead by example. Lead by example. And um, I don't talk, you know, like my son, like, He's you know my baby. He's you know sooner or later that I was that I was a gang member and stuff like that. But um, you know I just don't glorify nothing that I ever did. And um, you know, like my daughter, she's she goes to Cal Poly Pomona. She's working on her bachelor's degree. So I don't she don't need no advice from me. But I just you know I just have to reassure her all the time that I'm not that person no more, and that I'm that I am going to be around forever. That I'm never going to be out of her life again. And, um, you know, as for the baby, you know, when he gets bigger, I like, all I can do is lead by example and show him a good example. And, um, and, um, if he starts to go down the wrong path, you know, all I could do is talk, talk to him and that's all I can do. And he, he has to make his own decision for himself, but, you know, but I'll be there to help him along the way and get him along the way. Lead by example. Yeah. It was awesome, man. It was awesome. Yeah, I mean, I didn't expect a reaction. I wanted to cry when I seen this picture. Like, I wanted to cry, man, because, you know, because it made me, like, regret all the things I did in my life, man. Not, not just only the tattoos, but, like, you know, like, I see this picture, and it's like I said, man, like, like, if someone showed this picture to someone in the street, and said something like, you know, with that, with a post of like my shirt being buttoned, unbuttoned, like, like it could be like on a, like on a flyer, like vote for this guy for, for mayor or for, because I look like a regular clean cut person, man, and it's crazy. And I could like, from this way, I could look like, like um, like someone running for Congress. It could be, you know, like, it could have been anything, you know, that's like if I chose the right path in life. Thank you very much.